Hi there, in this video I'm going to take you along with me to a Bluebell Wood to do some macro photography. But before we do that, I thought it might be a good idea to show you how I made this reflector, which is made from just some simple Farmex board and some silver foil. Okay, so we have the silver foil and we've got some contact adhesive, Farmex board. This piece I've got has been lying around the studio, so it's a bit battered, but it'll serve its purpose. At the end of the day, I'm not going to put this thing on show. It's purely a tool for the job. I've got a scalpel to cut it all down with and some paper just so that when I spray the adhesive, it doesn't stick to the floor. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just get the paper all laid out on the floor and get the contact adhesive, spray it all nice and evenly right to the corners of the Farmex board and then get my silver foil, just tear it off to the right length and just basically line it up so that it fits right onto the edge and then just smooth it down like so. If you do have any gold foil, if you want to use that instead, that'll give you more of a morning warm light. That's fine, I'm going to go with silver on this particular job. Just going to throw all this paper away now. And now all I need to do is just trim off the excess Farmex board. I'm not going to cut right the way through the Farmex, so I'm just going to score it and not go right through and mark my floor. And then all I need to do is fold it back like so, and then just score it again down this crease here. And then just snap it off like so. And there you have it, white on the one side and shiny silver on the other. Now for the next stage, what we want to do is we want to be able to fold this down so it fits in our pack. So the best thing is to take a, a look at your rucksack or your pocket you want to put this into and work out what the maximum width and then divide it by the length of the board. Then we just need to score it on the white side. Make sure when you do this you don't cut right the way through. Again you just want to score the board and the Farmex in the middle and leave the, the board on the opposite side and the foil intact because they're going to be your crease. Just keep scoring down the full length of the board, like so. And then all we need to do is snap on those score lines, leaving that foil, like I said, as a hinge intact. I'd always recommend you fold the foil inwards, that way it won't get damaged. And there you go, that's it. As you can see, it, uh, it can pretty much stand up by itself, uh, which, you know, in light winds is great. But obviously, you know, you might need a clip like I tend to use. And there you go, fold that all down. And um, as you can see there, the whole unit is only ever going to be that big in your pack, which is great. Off we go. I'm just going to take you to a Bluebell Wood that I know, which is all the way up this hill, up over the top and then dropped down into a little bit of a valley. Bit of shade, that's where their bluebells like to uh, to grow. They're pretty much every year, so fingers crossed they are there this year as well. And I've got my little reflector that I've just made, so we can bounce some light back under them. There are patches of light, hopefully, because the tree canopy is not very thick there, especially sort of early spring. Um, also, it's quite a, a bright day today. Even though it's, um, well, what is it today? It's quite a, you can see by my face, it's quite bright and yet quite thick cloud cover. Um, it should give us a good enough shutter speed to freeze because there is quite a bit of wind about. Hopefully a bit of rain wouldn't hurt. Just wet the leaves and give us that lovely saturation. Look, the canopy's not, not that thick really through this bit. It's quite ancient woodland. So there's quite a few different trees here. It's not a uh, typical pine forest. You get that on the opposite side. This is um, all 100% natural, <laughs> as you'd say. Now, I do know down here, and if you can see, just there, there's a big strip of bluebells that runs 
every year just under that tree there and they do look really nice and I might get into there but if you look behind me there they are look can you see those those are all the blue and they run right the way up the hill right up into the valley up to here so see them all the way down there so. There just seems to be more of them here this year than there ever has and uh, this area here is normally quite sparse but it's really dense so i'm thinking can i have a quick look over here and see if i can find some sort of composition especially looking up a hill because it ended up with all purple in the background so the main plant and then i should get a lovely sort of purple background behind it So this area here, fantastic. Loads of colour, got a nice mink line. But I found a tree which has fallen and I'm gonna use it to sort of basically guide you in from the left hand side. Um, so I'm gonna get down low, get a nice close up of one of the bluebells and then have this sort of tree sort of lead your eye through the picture to the solid bluebell background behind it. So just start that now. Here I'm using a Manfrotto tripod. I've got the legs extended down to their lowest. Any further down, as you can see, the um, column hits the ground, but you can actually lift this part out and go forward if you want to, but it's about the right height for what I actually need. I haven't brought much kit with me today, just something to kneel on. And I've um, got my Fuji X-T3, which is in the bag here. It's got a 60mm lens on it, um, which will obviously a macro lens so it's perfect for this i've just literally got a manfrotto um insert uh, i've got a 55 to 200 i've also got the um, let's have a quick look i've got a 12 mil if i need it and i've also got a 18 to 55 in there as well and a spare battery a uh, knife to cut any grass if i need to obviously we've got the reflector made earlier and the clamp to hold it up if i need to see i've squeezed all of that into a um just a really small osprey what is it Hike Light 18, so just a little Manfrotto insert. This is off of uh, my bigger Manfrotto uh, thing and uh, waterproof coat at the bottom if I need to. I found a little tiny path the deers have used through this, so I haven't trampled down any bluebells. Okay, here we're shooting at a hundredth of a second. Um, I'm using F4 on this lens at ISO 200. It looks like I'm underexposing it by about a stop, but that's mainly because the background's quite dark and um, I'll uh, lose the highlights if I'm not careful. Um, on the blue itself and uh, all the colour will be missing out of it so rather than leave that all washed out I'd rather keep that safe and as you can see by the histogram there look it's it's lovely in the middle it's nice and sort of like perfectly exposed nothing's being sort of clipped on there um, in manual focus um, I'm shooting through some bluebells to give me this nice softness to them here at the here at the bottom and obviously you can just see the green been picked out and the tree behind it just giving it a bit of separation um, I will do just a pure green one um, later on um, I've gone against using the tree as a, um, a leading line because it's just um, just gonna look a bit too busy to be honest um, this is just a, a nice simple shot just to get on with so, so I've um, set it all up here um, I'm now going to get out my reflector. I've got a little clip which I'll use to help it stand up. It is quite dull here. Um, a lot of the light is just over there, brighter in the canopy, which I'll do another shot in a minute with. Um, so I'm going to use the shiny side because the shiny side, as you can see, even in this weather, um, gives you a nice light. I'm going to pop that in now and show you how that looks um, through the camera lens. Thank you. 
Here you go, as you can see, I'm just literally just propping it up. Sort of like partly tripod, uh, partly with that little red um, crocodile clip I mentioned. And that's just adding a little bit of light just to this one that we're aiming at over here. So that's uh, there's the setup there, so you get an idea. I did have to get down a little bit lower in the end, so I did um, drop that column so it would help me to get nice and low. And uh, there's the image on the, the back there, if you can if you can just see that. It's wonderful. As I say, I'm manually focusing this. As you can see, I'm zoomed right in now. Let's come back out. <sighs> Flies everywhere today. I've got to let's put on a two second timer. Don't get any shake and we'll frame that up and away we go. There we go. It's brilliant and again just get another one just in case it's moved and we've got a little bit of focus in issues. There we go. Another look. Zoom in on that. Oh yeah, as you can you see that from that screen. And here we go with the um, final image today. Um, this is right in between the bluebells I am here, as you can see. So as you see on the screen there, we've got, we're shooting a hundredth at F4. And this is um, just a 0.6 of a stop under exposed, but uh, that should be perfect for what we're looking at. As you can see, I've just propped up that silver card again. And as I showed you, it just gives you that little bit of extra light on the, the bluebells. So I'm just going to shoot that now and uh, put that one up for you. And sometimes it, um, it really helps to sort of like pull back quite a bit and um, you'll get a nice shot like, let's just bring this one back up. You can just see that shot there. That's going to be um, quite a nice shot. And it's picked it out, all the bluebells there. I'm just going to focus it now, make sure it's right. Um, so that'll be a second shot of the same composition, just reframed. And as you can see, it's um, easy. With this nice reflector bouncing that light back under the bells. Fantastic. Let's carry on. Well, it's all a bit of a rush now. I've got to get back for the kids. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you liked those pictures. If you did, please drop me a like. And if you want to um, see more of this, let me know in the comments below. And which one of those did you prefer? Was it the far away one with a bit more background to it or more of the close-up images? Either way, see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.